What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to talk about an amp that won a recent poll on our YouTube channel, the Gravity Audio WZ8000.1D. So I went to Amazon and picked one up, 270 bucks plus tax and shipping. If you'd like to support me, check the links in the video description, but we have somebody that wants to say something. Good evening friends, Dick Riculous here, reporting live for WBIGD TV. Today we're going to talk about another product. We're going to have Big D test and prove if it's true, if it's false, if it's right, if it's wrong, if the manufacturer's leading you down a path of destruction, if they're just plain out lying to you, lying to you, lying to you. We are here and we're going to report it because that's what we do. Dick Riculous here, WBIGD TV. All right, guys, so you know we have trouble when Dick Riculous enters the house, but of course we have this amp that says 8,000 watts all over the outside of it but it is not an 8,000 watt amp as expected for under 300 bucks. So let's see what we get here. We get the manual. We're gonna talk a little bit about what the manual says. Thank you for purchasing Gravity Class D amplifier. They're manufactured with advanced craftsmanship using the highest quality components. We recommend you contact an authorized Gravity dealer to do the installation. Well, the problem is who the heck is that? We don't have any information on it. It's nowhere, there's no website, there's no information about a dealer. Anyway, let's see what else they say. 200 amp fuse, zero gauge input, which I'm gonna show you, you're gonna need that and more, because this amp sucks out the power. Rated 3000 watts at one ohm, 2200 at two ohms, 1500 at four ohms. What's this 8000 watt crap? You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. You big dummy. Let's take a look at the amp. You can see the power protect LEDs, remote connection there for the base knob, inputs for the RCAs as your Tiffany style. We have gain, low pass filter, a variable subsonic, a variable bass boost frequency, and a variable bass boost level. On the opposite side, we have four gauge for the speaker outputs, one ohm minimum is what it says. And then we also have one ohm inputs for power and ground and then a small remote connection. No hex key needed here, just a standard Phillips screwdriver for all the terminals. Let's take a look at the dimensions. 23.3 inches long, 8.3 inches wide. So it's kind of a big amp. And you can also see the thickness of there as far as the height goes. 2.5 inches at the tallest part, and about 2 inches for the other parts of the amp. Now, we got this amp on the dyno. We had to use the dual inputs because this amplifier is so inefficient. We'll talk about that a little bit later here during the test. All right, this part of the video, we're gonna test the power output of the amplifier using the SMD DeMore Engineering Amplifier Dyno. This tests RMS power output in watts. So we're gonna find out if the amp does what it's rated to do. First off, four ohms, it's rated 1500 watts in the manual. Doesn't say what the voltage is. Certified test here takes us up to 1% total harmonic distortion. You can see 1434, so not quite there. The next test is uncertified, which takes us up to the clipping point of the amplifier when it starts doing damage to your speakers. Uh, 1477 to 14.45, so just shy of the ratings. Dynamically, we're able to get the rated 1500 watts without a problem. You can see here over 1600 watts, 1653 at 14.8. Now, the efficiency at four ohms, not that good, 64.2%, which is not good for a class D amp. Next up, the two ohm test, where the amp is rated 2200 watts. Again, the voltage is not specified, so we'll assume 14.4. Certified test at 40 hertz, takes us up to 1% THD, a little bit shy. 2128, but again, our voltage is just a little bit under that, so it's right at the rated power. Uncertified up to clipping point, again, 40 Hertz track. And we did get the rated power. We got 2273 at 14 volts. Dynamically sends a 40 Hertz pulse tone into the amp. And yeah, you can see it's got good dynamic power. 2923, 14.52. Now efficiency, again, not very good. 67.5% at two ohms. For a class D amp, that is not good. All right now the one ohm test. Rated 3,000 watts in the manual, but it says 8,000 watts all over the box. We'll get to that again later. So certified test. The amp did not run cleanly in the certified test. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit here. 
All right, so you can see um, <laughs> the current, look at that, 429.6. It did not count up cleanly, so this number here, I don't even think is accurate as far as what the amp can really do. It just does not do the 1% THD mode very good. So I'm gonna mark it on the sheet as did not run, but uh, let's try some of the other tests. All right, so here is the uncertified test, which takes us up to clipping where it did run cleanly. And you can see 2882 at 13.37. But look at the current pull, 418.5 amps of current. Whoa, dynamic power. It had pretty good dynamic power. You can see here, uh, getting close to 5,000 watts, 4856 at 14.29. Now look at this efficiency, 53.2% at one ohm. That is horrible. And here are the results of all the dyno tests. Feel free to pause the video here if you'd like to check all these results out. See how it did. Now next up, let's see how the amp performs with the Savard 8-inch subs. All right, got the Gravity Warzone 8K here on the bench. Got a little music playing on the subs. Savard 8s. Let's check them out. Next up, we're going to check and see what's inside this amp. Caps and your mama slaps. Let's take off the six screws from the bottom of the amp. And of course, one of them has a little protective thing on it, but we don't care because we do this for you guys. Now, right off the bat, if you look closely, you'll notice it's, uh, yeah, it kind of looks like an audio pipe, but I don't think it is. I think it's just a generic amp, but look at the way the amp is kind of divided. And I'll show you a picture here. It's like two separate 1500 watt amp boards inside because all the components match up. Here is the left side. You can see the transformer. You can see the caps. You can see the choke. Look on the other side. Exactly the same. So yeah, and here are the caps. 80 volt 4700 microfarad cap top, which are not good from what I've been told. 80 volt 2200 microfarad as well. And then the filter caps are... 2200 microfarad 25 volts i did a quick google search on the model number was not able to find another amp with that but i did want to show you the apcle 3000.1d and it's not the same as that amp by audio pipe let's talk about the good stuff first off the value getting pretty good value for your money has a variable subsonic includes the bass remote and has oversized 10 inputs now things that could be better Efficiency is horrible. You're going to need a huge alternator and lots of batteries to run this amp. It's not linkable because the amp boards are already linked inside. It's a big amp. Also, no website or dealer info anywhere. 8,000 watts? Yeah, right. Why are you going to put that on the box? Now, for the same amount of money, you can get the Tar Amp Smart 3, which we've shown before. This amp is a lot more efficient. It's about the same price. Gives you more power and also... Um, it's not near as big in size. So for my money, if I was spending my money, and this is why I do these videos for you guys, because I do spend my money, I would go for the Tar Amp Smart 3. I've had a lot of people request this particular amp, and I'm glad to do things that help you guys out, because that's why I do what I do. I greatly appreciate your support on patreon.com slash oldschoolstereo. Thanks for giving me all the feedback that you give me. I appreciate you guys very much. Special thanks to Byron, Jesus, Stuart, Travis, Ben. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Another amp. This time a little amp. Pioneer.
GMD 1004 Class F as in Frank, D as in Dummy. Wow, that is a little amp, friends. Let's see what else is in the box. Wires, wires galore. All right, so I decided to do this Pioneer amp as kind of an add-on to one of my videos because it just didn't have enough content to do its own video. This amp is tiny, has a huge wiring harness. Let's just do a few tests here. First, four, four ohm, four channel test. 43 watts, it's rated 45 watts, so pretty much right at the rated power. And at two ohms, it's rated 45 by four, but you can see here it does quite a bit more. 81 by four at two ohms. Bridged mono down to two channels, it's rated 90 watts by two, and we got 108, 103, so very good. You can pause this if you want to see all the different tests as we did 40 hertz and also one kilohertz test. And the amp overall performed well. Thanks for watching.